Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome back to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thank you for joining us again this week. So today, we are talking about why your workers aren't the problem. Mm -hmm. We're covering whether it's an employee, subs, labor, anyone that you are paying money to, no matter their status, uh, when there is an issue, it's not their fault, it's right. yours. Right. right. And so we're, we're going to talk about what that means, how that looks, and really the mindset you have to have going into finding and hiring em uh, workers, employees, and labor, subs, all of those people we're just going to call workers for this podcast sure. because it it's covers all, all, of, them. all of them. Yeah. And so go ahead. The, uh, sorry, the, the standard mindset that we, I've said, Right. Yeah. Um, but that we we run into all the time is there's I mean, it's impossible to find people. Nobody wants to work nowadays. These millennials, the, all they want to do is look at their phones. Nobody wants to yep. earn a paycheck. There's no nobody's got that grit that I have when I was growing up. And, you know, that my yep. dad wouldn't let me, you know, do anything without putting in grit. And, you know, they've got that mentality. I've had that mentality because it's it's hard to find good people. Yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to find good staff. No matter what it is, whether it's your subs, whether it's employees, it's really, really hard to find those people. And it's easier to get to a place of like, well, I'm just going to have to do it all myself. I'm going to have to be a micromanager because there are no good people yeah. out there. If you go to any post on our TikTok or socials and you go to any post that we're talking about subcontractors mm -hmm. or labor yeah. or 1099s, any post that mentions that. Yeah. You will see a comment underneath it from someone complaining that, oh, well, you just can't find good ones. Like uh -huh. all, all, every single post, yeah. every single time, it's just people come, come out of the woodwork just complaining about, oh, there's just no good work out there. I can't find, there's not a single good worker out there. So that's first off is the wrong mindset mentality yeah. because there are. There are also bad ones. Mm -hmm. And you're hiring the bad ones because you're doing it wrong. Right. You're lazy and doing it wrong. So you're hiring the bad uh, available guys to do the work. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It's self-fulfilling prophecy. There aren't good ones that you're hiring. Yeah. And so what does that mean? How do the, we well, change that? Uh, look at... You know, everybody has businesses, companies that they admire that they're like, gosh, man, I'd yeah. love to get to that space. Did they hire all the wrong people and just figured out how to micromanage them to the place where they've got a successful business? Yep. No, they put in the time, the effort to find the right people. Right. Um, and it takes a lot of work, yeah. you know, and, it, you know, I, uh, when it when it comes to like subcontractors years ago when, you know, in, I mean, the the, you know, 2010, 2018 around in that, you know, whatever. I would say to find a good sub, you gotta you've got to bring in four to start executing work to find out that three of them suck and one of them is a good one. Yeah. That's what it used to be. It's probably more like six to eight now, right? But you, what I would have ended up doing is I uh, I got to six, I got to seven. It's like you know what, they all suck. There's no there's no good ones. Yeah. And I'm I, you've got to keep going out on the grind. You will find them. Yeah. Right. And, and we'll talk at the end of this podcast about vetting and mm -hmm. holding them accountable, that sort of thing. Because yeah. you're not going to hire eight eight subs to do eight jobs, screw them all up, and we're upside down on eight, eight properties. That's yeah. obviously not what we're talking about. We're going to talk about how to vet them. You might have six to eight that you're vetting, talking to, testing, that sort of thing before you hire a few and you're going to try some out on some jobs. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it is work to find them. That's part yeah. of your job to hunt down the right labor that you want, the right workers that you need, the right employees that you want to hire. It is a job to do. It's not just a passive thing. You know, there's there's really two different mindsets that that we want you to have, right? And there's two things that people get wrong that we that we think when when they're thinking about it. it right. First off is the good ones are out there. They're not hunting you down. Mm -hmm. You have to hunt them down, right? So I, you know, we get emails, phone numbers in our construction company. People we get walk calls in the door all the time mm -hmm. looking for work. Mm -hmm. If they're walking in my door looking for work, there's a reason that other people aren't hiring them. Right. I'm not saying those guys can't be good. I'm saying those guys you got to be very suspicious of because there's mm -hmm. a reason that they that they aren't working right now. Right now, it could be an outlier. There could be you know stuff happened. They're trying to go on their own. They're trying to hunt down work. I, I'm not saying they're all bad, but 
if you're going the most convenient route mm-hmm. to find workers, to find subs, to find employees, it's the most convenient where they're just com- dropping in your lap. There's a high chance that they're not going to work out yeah. because the guys that you want are busy. Yeah. The guys that you want are working for the competitor. The guys mm-hmm. that you want are, are are not coming and knocking on your door pursuing you. Right. So how do we find them? How do we go out and get them? Well, and once I find them, why would they change? Yeah. What is it about my company, the what I'm offering to them that is appealing enough for them to say, I'll consider that? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I I want to hire. (laughs) This is a hard one, Mm -hmm. but I want to hire employees and labor that hold me to a certain standard that I'm hitting. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a standard that they want out of the company they're working at, Mm -hmm. they're not going to they're probably not going to be great workers. You don't want people that come in. They're just a placeholder. Yeah, that they're just looking looking for the dollar this week and and Mm -hmm. they're all off to the next one. They're not going to be long term for your company. So that that's one of the mindsets is, uh, you know, everyone I find is bad. That's because you're not hunting for them. So that's that's the first mindset. The second one is people aren't tools. The people that we hire are the product that we're delivering in construction, in any sort of trade, in anything in this construction industry. Mm -hmm. The final product of the building, of the kitchen, of the HVAC unit, all of that is one of the two products we sell. The second product is a customer experience, the customer service, Mm -hmm. and how we build our reputation. That. The reputation isn't the kitchen we put in. The reputation is people's experience of us putting that kitchen in. Right. And so what what the mindset shift that ne- needs to happen is that these people that I'm hiring, whether they're 1099, in-house, or employees of mine doing ma- uh, management, all of those people that I'm hiring are delivering my product and are part of that product. Mm-hmm. They aren't my tool to get it done, get out of my way, and I'm going to hold, you know, I- I'm going to abuse you, take advantage of you. We don't do that. If you do that, you're going to burn through the good guys, keep the yep. bad guys because they need the work, and it's it never grows because now all I'm all I'm doing is constantly find replacement labor because I'm hiring the wrong guys and leading them the wrong way mm-hmm. and abusing them as tools that to get what I want done done. Right, right. So those those are really the two big flaws that we see in mindsets. Yeah. Uh, one good example we, we were talking about this podcast before we shot it. We we always do a planning meeting, kind of mm-hmm. talking through it. And a great example that we were talking about is there is not any sort of magic when Chick-fil-A hires somebody (laughs) versus when McDonald's hires somebody. But the experience going through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru or walking in is 100% different than the experience going through McDonald's drive-thru or walking in. Right. And they have they have consistency store over store. Yep. You know, I go to I go to Chick-fil-A here and then I go five miles down the road and go to the next one, let's be honest, a mile and a half down the road because they're everywhere. Um, Well, in the south. Yeah. Yeah. In the south. Um, But the 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 experience with the people yep. the the delivery of the actual product the chicken the the food that i get is the same yep. and the experience that i have from top to bottom for the most part yep. is always the same if i go to another place like a mcdonald's it, it, there's variables every time yeah and there are great people that work at mcdonald's of course there's it's not mcdonald's is trash it's there are people that are great that work at mcdonald's McDonald's culture and the people at, you don't have the same experience with everybody. It's you're you're rolling the dice if I'm going to get cussed out at the drive through or if I'm going to get a really good experience right. with a smile. Right. With Chick Fil A, again, we're we're being very broad, but there is an accountability. There's a set how we do things. There's a culture that you have to abide by. There's a there is this is what's expected out of you. If you can do it, we want you here. Mm-hmm. And people want to be there and people want to work there and, and they get really good employees because of that. Mm-hmm. And these employees half the time are 19 years old, 18 years old, 17 years old, but they have the mindset of the customer service side is first. And well, I'm going to hold you accountable to that. And if you can't be held accountable to that, you are not. You wouldn't want to work here. P- Chick-fil-A, because, you know, uh, uh, spoiler, I'm a, uh, ex Chick Fil A employee, they I fired work. you. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, bad yeah. Service. yeah, yeah. Uh, But they, you know, I, I worked there, and um, their their motivation with their employees is development. Yeah, whatever it is, right? They have a they have a program for um, uh, getting college. Uh, your college 
covered, yeah. right? They have a program for developing your management skills. They have a program for moving up and a vision for opportunities within the company. But their their motivation in behind how they treat their employees is to develop that person Correct. into a better person. And by nature of doing that, Chick-fil-A is better because yeah. of that. But I think some other places, their motivation is to get a person in to make the, 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 the place operate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's not, uh, it's not the, the employee doesn't feel poured into valuable and whatever. They're just, I'm here to earn a paycheck yeah. and I execute what needs to get done, but there's no ownership. There's no care behind it because they don't feel cared for. Yeah. Right. Uh, growing up, uh, you know, when I started my first job when I was 14 at Dairy Queen mm -hmm. and I worked at Dairy Queen for DQ probably treats. six years through, through you know, about 20 at the same time, my sister, who's a year and a half older than me, was working at Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of had the polar opposite experiences of Dairy Queen is, I just need a human standing there to take people's money and pass the ice cream cone to them. Right. At Chick-fil-A, it was, I need you to look this way. I need you to have this clean uniform. I need you to have this, this, and this. Like there were so many requirements and accountability that she mm -hmm. had that I didn't have. She was getting a couple bucks an hour more, but I was having a lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I could do what I want, eat what I want, when, whenever I want. You know, there was there was a lot looser uh, expectations on me at Dairy Queen because mm -hmm. it was like, I need you to just freaking show I'm not, up. I'm not trying to develop you. I just need you to know how to put ice cream in a cone and hand it to somebody yeah. and take the money. Yes, and so the the two experiences uh, of of where she worked where i worked were to two totally different growth experiences for mm -hmm. us in going into jobs and learning what's expected out of you yeah. right and so well and i think something that yeah. that may be interesting to to point out with a with a mcdonald's i know for sure um there are opportunities. Yeah. There are visions of like, hey, you want to go to assistant manager, you want to go to manager, you want to, you know, there are opportunities that are there available for those employees. Get it if you want it. Yeah. Is the mentality. Here's the vision. If you want it, show up, show out, right? With Chick-fil-A, it is actually the company that is working to pour them and push them towards those opportunities, which is a completely different feel. Yep. Right. That's right. So, so that being said, shifting back into construction, how do we vet and hold accountable? How do we find the right ones, mm -hmm. bring them in, and then how do we continue to pour in and, and keep them accountable? And pouring in doesn't mean my full-time job yeah. is, is, is holding this person's hand and making their life cushy. And, uh, you know, that's not what we're talking about. It's, it's, the, you're, it's the same amount of effort spent in a different way, mm -hmm. right? When I have a bad employee, half of my effort is fixing their problems, checking on them. I don't know if they're doing that. I'm going to swing by that job site. Mm -hmm. and, and Taking up brain space because are they working? Are they not? You know. The mistrust and the babysitting mm -hmm. amount of time, if we hire the right person, that same time spent is spent developing, growing, mm -hmm. helping, uh, uh, supporting. And so the, the mind shift of, who you are here to me, right? We, I said earlier, you know, the, the mindset of you are the product here, mm -hmm. right? My employee is the product. So I developing my import employee is developing my product Just and increasing my, the quality of the final. Product. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that, that mindset shift, changes when you're hiring and as well as changes when you're managing them where it's not just a tool to get as much money and work out of them as possible and pay them as cheap as possible but mm -hmm. i want to help them grow i want them to make more money how can i make you know i was i'm, I'm coaching another company right now that, that I'm, I'm teamed up with and we were talking about their installers and it's like listen how do we make our installers the richest installers in the city mm -hmm. how do we make it to where every installer is like Hey, uh, how do I work for you guys? Mm -hmm. How do we set that bar to where we're not losing money, but making more money because of it, right. because our products increasing in value. Right. Right. And so it's the mindset of how do I make these guys rich? Mm -hmm. If I can do that, that's their motivating factor. They're going to be here and they're going to mold into the system and the accountability that I want. But the problem is we live in a construction world that is reactive, not proactive. And right. that takes a lot of proactive mindset to be able to develop an employee, to be able to set a vision, to be able to hold them accountable, to coach them where you want them to go, to help them understand how to make more money with you. All of that is proactive. Right. And we live in a reactive construction world, which mm -hmm. is like, hey, I'm dealing with fires, man. I don't, you want me to spend time on helping this guy get better at his job. That would that's a luxury for me. That's that's not achievable. I just need to get it done. I need right. I need dollars to make payroll this month. Mm -hmm. And so I we just gotta get this done, right? And so right. I understand that mindset and being there. 
there needs to be a transition out of that. That yeah. we need to change that from the permanent to a temporary. And how do we transition? And that's what that's what our coaching program well, and does. If, and, and if if you don't do that, the byproduct of it is that's where you're going to stay. Yeah, you're going to stay in that reactive space where it's I, I don't have time for development. I just have to. Right. I yep. just have to earn money. I just have to pay the bills. I just, you know, and you can be there for the next two years, three yep. years, 10 years, 20 years. Yep. I know people that in all variations of that, that are still doing the same thing that they've been doing 20 years ago. And they're still in that high stress environment. Yep. They haven't gotten over the punt, over the curve. And it's because this thing feels like, so I'm going to spend effort and time in a direction that earns me nothing yep. today. <laughs> it, it will earn you something way more valuable in the future. Yeah. But right now it earns you nothing. Yeah. Right. And so that's why it doesn't get done. That's right. And I, I think it's when we're talking about how to vet, how to hold accountable, the, if you took one thing away from this podcast, whether you're finding subcontractors, 1099 labor, or you're hiring a manager or no matter what, if you're hiring a worker for something, yeah. the number one thing you, you just this little shift in your mindset is mm-hmm. I am going to put my full-time hat on as HR and hunt for the right person and make that my job. Mm-hmm. Not who's the quickest minimal effort to get someone out here to yeah. get someone working to take stuff off my plate. The, if, the, the, guy, the, the, the guy or girl that you come across that is a no-brainer, be careful. Yeah. We've had a lot of no-brainers. Ooh, no-brainer. Especially gonna, on the very first person you talk to. Right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Done. Perfect. So if I'm going and I've got a plan, right? We have an HR process plan that we that we give to you if you're in our coaching program. If I'm following that plan, I can't make the no-brainer decision. Mm-hmm. I can't, it doesn't allow me to just hire the first person that I like, that I connect with, that I want to go grab a beer with after work. That guy sounds fun. Let's bring him in. Right, right. It, there is a process on how we're going to vet. There's a process on how we bring them in. There's a process on the paperwork. There's a process of sending expectations and it, it takes a little bit more time than getting them in the truck by tomorrow, but it's well worth that investment of time because it's going to make you and save you money over the next week, month, year, five years. Right. And so that investment that you have to do in the front end is what people aren't willing to put the time and effort in. Right. So when we talk about vetting, holding people accountable, one of the things, you know, giving you some examples, when I'm bringing in a new crew, I get a list of 10 things that, that, you know, as a general contractor, these are kind of the 10 general trade things that, that you need to do. You're not an electrician, you're not a plumber, but how are you with electrical? How are you with plumbing? Mm-hmm. How are you with uh, sheetrock? How are you with painting? What about, the, and I, we have listed out 10 things, 20 things, 15 things of that you can do as a general crew on, on our job site. And I say to, uh, say to the crew, okay, listen, I want you to list these 10 things one through 10. Mm-hmm. Now, one, you're the best at 10, you're the worst at. Now, even the number 10 thing that you're the worst at, you can do, you might be great at mm-hmm. it. But if I get had two work orders, one is for job A and one is for job B. And job A does the number one thing on your list and job right. B does the number 10 thing. Don't you want all of job A's? Right. I want to give them all to you because you'll be fast, efficient, and do it well mm-hmm. and make more money here than the thing that you're not really good at. You never really laid but hardwoods before, but right. I think I could figure it out through Google and, you know, and great. That's fine if you can figure that out. And if I need you to do it, I understand you can do it, mm-hmm. but let's get you, let's stack the deck for you. Let's get to the stuff that you're really good at and put you out front on that. So we, we have that conversation and what really happens is our crews are now telling us what they're not good at. Right. And so I'm not uh, on the bottom half of that list. Uh, even though they might be good at it, I don't want them uh, leading it. They, they're going to be average at best. Yeah. And so a, I'm starting to vet what they can and can't do. B I'm having those conversations about these while I'm sitting in front of them. Tell me about that. Okay. So you're great at that. What's your favorite part of that? How long have you been doing that? What about this? Okay. You listed this as your least favorite. Why is that? Well, I'm just not good at electrical. It doesn't make sense. And I'm kind of scared of getting hurt. Okay, that makes sense. Great. Sure. Um, and so we start having those conversations around their skill set when we're starting to do the vetting process. It's mm-hmm. not the guy that says, "Hey, I can, I, you know, I've been doing this forever. I can handle this. I can do a flip. I can do your kitchen for you." That's good. Everyone says that. Let's start vetting you out skill wise for that. Right. Right. Uh, same thing with employees. Like when when we're hiring a project manager, we've talked about this on, on previous podcasts. If I'm hiring a project manager, I'm not going to sit through an interview that they could BS their way through to get themselves a job, I am going to vet them. Yep. So what does vetting mean on an, on an interview for a project manager? Well, inspect what you expect them to be. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we send them out on doing an estimate as part of the interview process. We usually do a property that we're in the middle of construction on. 
we've maybe demoed the kitchen and we're doing put back right now. So we'll say, hey, swing by this job. It's 10 minutes from the office. If you wouldn't mind, put together an estimate on what it costs from today moving forward to get that kitchen put back together. Mm -hmm. Very broad instructions, but very, very specific. Hey, I need it put back together. Can you get to me Friday by noon? If you can do that, this is kind of our last phase of interviews. We don't ask everyone to do this, but we really like you. We just want to understand how your brain works. You don't have to have perfect pricing. I just want to understand how you lay out an estimate and what you know, what you don't know, because I need to know what you know and don't know before mm-hmm. I can make a hire. Mm-hmm. Right? That sort of vetting, that takes a lot of work. It takes work to sit down, to set up a job site, to review it on Friday, to look at it, to assess it, and to say no to the guy that would fix my problem today mm-hmm. and move and not hire them. All of that is a ton of work. But doing that is how we start getting the best labor and the best employees uh, into our company that are here long term for yeah. us. Well, and, and one of the other things that, you know, when, when you're when you're going to vet, what are you vetting for? Yeah. What do I need? Right. And so look at um, your employees. Right. If it's an office manager, what skills, what uh, intangibles do yeah. I need an office manager to have? What what skills and, and intangibles do I need a project manager to have? Maybe when it comes to a project manager, they need to have a general understanding of the construction world. It'd be great if they had a, a, a lot of knowledge, mm-hmm. but I need them to be incredibly detailed. I need them to be default of empathy. They're, they can empathize with crews and clients and understand what they're going through, which puts them in a place of like, ooh, I'm going to communicate because yeah. I understand what they're dealing with. Yeah. Right. Those are things that you can guide, but you can't that they either are or are not. Yeah. Right. But coming up with that. Now, that's different for a crew. I, I, you know, obviously, I want them to be ethical. I want them to, to have the ability to show up on time. Um, but if they don't know how to install sheetrock, that's a problem. Yeah. Right. So understanding when I'm vetting somebody out, what do I what do I what am I looking for? Right. And so that's a that's a really important part of it, which is a part of the reason for a crew. We have a one through 10 list of here's some standard construction things. Tell me your skill level on those. Yeah. That's a highly valuable thing that we need to know. Yep. Um, and rank we, them because they'll put 10 on every single one. Correct. Don't give me one to 10 on each one. Say rank these from first to, to last. Correct. That, yeah. that sort of thing. But I think what, what you're saying, too, is don't just sit down. To, don't reactively fi- try to figure out what you need out of the person when you're sitting in the interview or the conversation with them. Right. Let's proactively write out the job description, even for a crew. This is what I want a crew to do. We have cl- uh, we have a subcontractor agreement form. So our 1099 labor, it's really a instruction manual slash expectations list of what they're committing to that they sign. Right. And so this is how you get paid because if I can get them paid faster and more money, they're going to be here forever. Mm-hmm. And so let me teach you what that, how to do that. Let me show you what I need from you. Let me show you where to put your pictures. Let me show you exactly how to leave a job site because I won't send you back. You can be on to the next one if you do it this way. Right. And so that's for, for the, the labor. For employees, i got a job description of what they are and are not going to do, what they're going to be held accountable to, what I expect out of them. And so before I even start interviewing anyone, that's written out because that's going to allow me to say, hey, this guy doesn't really have this this skill. This guy doesn't really have this skill, as opposed to I really like him. I can figure out everything else later. Right. So right. Well, and I I think kind of uh, going towards the end and closing out the 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 things. I think there's two things to really pull out of this. Yeah. And when you're talking about mindset, shifting your mindset to they're they're out there. Yeah. Right. The people that you're looking for are out there. They're just hard to find. Look at the biggest companies that you, you know, the most successful businesses out there. Um, they got there because they realized that finding good people is hard. And so they put the steps and processes in place to vet people really well and to find good people that they can plug into the next important place, which is they understand that for this company and the product, the end product to be good, I need people that enjoy being here, that are uh, want to put the work in. And the way that I create that is that I create an environment that allows my employee to feel like I'm pushing for their success. Yep. It's not uh, I found and vetted a person and now I have my tools to execute my success, yeah. right? It's switching that mindset to I'm trying to find really solid people and then bring them into this company and I'm going to do everything I can do to make them better people by being a part of our business. And that, and the byproduct of that is that your end product is better. Your customer experience is better. Yep. If you want 
one thing to do today, if you're going to hire a crew, if you're looking for a new paint crew, right? Let's use that as an example. Mm -hmm. Your paint company or your general contractor looking for a painter. Either way, I'm looking to hire a paint crew. The one thing you can do differently starting today is when I'm looking for that crew, I'm going to draw out expectations of how everything works mm -hmm. in our company, how they get paid, when they get paid, when I expect them to show up, what should they be wearing, everything, the do's and don'ts on our job sites, all of that, write that out. Yeah. Take one hour and write one of those out before you get started. Mm -hmm. From there, you're gonna talk to a minimum three paint companies, paint crews. Mm -hmm. Don't interview one and hire them and try them out. Right. You're gonna to talk to three. Even if the first ones are rock stars, perfect, talk to three. Practice checking all of the different options. Well, we jumped over that hurdles too many times. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I know what I want, I'm gonna write it out, and I can explain to the crew, this is my expectations of how you're gonna act. And then B, I'm going to vet minimum three conversations, three interviews with paint crews, three, hey, we're looking at doing this, can you come in, sit down at my office, sit down at Starbucks with me, I wanna talk about how you work, how we work, and maybe team up together. The partnership conversation where you know I'm gonna do the front end, you're gonna do the labor, I'm gonna do the back end, mm -hmm. and this is how you're gonna make money with us. If you have that written out, what you expect out of them, sit down and talk to three different companies. I guarantee you one of those will click. One of those will be like, I like what you're doing. I can do this. I can handle this. All three will probably say that, but you yeah. will start start feeling, this is what I'm looking for, and I've got three options. I still like the first one. I'm going to stick with them. Well, and the, uh, it, that's such great advice because the value there is perspective. Yeah. Right? I, I find that whether it was us hiring an employee or a subcontractor, it doesn't matter. We would hire the first one, and I only have the perspective of, wow, this guy's amazing. Yep. But then I bring in a second person. It's like, oh, I oh. thought that guy was amazing, but this other guy. And then you bring in a third one. It's like, well, this guy's a jackass, yeah. right? You know, but it gives you perspective to view. If you only do one person, you've only got that perspective. And you you tend to lean towards yes when it's probably a no if you had a different perspective. Yeah, uh, absolutely. All right, that's all we got on this topic. If you have any questions, hit us up, ProStruck360.com. We'd love to talk to you more about this. If you think we're wrong, let us know. We love yeah. to have those conversations. If you want to co some coaching, if you want help with HR, hiring, one-off stuff, reach out to us. We've got all different types of coaching packages as well as come to the winter retreat. It's coming up in January. I know it feels far away, but this is where It'll we be game here before plan. we know it. Yep. We, we got a certain amount of uh, seats. We have it very small every year because we interact personally. Jared and I are talking with each company yep. on this, helping you. So we can't get a lot of people there. Uh, so it's limited, limited. So go ahead and sign up, reserve your spot. You don't have to pay anything today. Get a, get reservations. We've got a payment plan. If you want to do that, if you're in the coaching program, the tickets are included on different levels. Reach out, just get some help. Make one step forward on getting some help on mm -hmm. what on what you're doing. And we're not gonna oversell you. We don't if you can't afford us, you're not gonna be able to afford us. Yep. And so it, that's one of the conversations we always have is if you if this isn't valuable and we have some some vetting ourselves of people that we're gonna coach, we're not gonna take you if you can't afford us. If yep. it's not gonna if we can't find and show you the value that you'll get out of this that's gonna pay for itself for, and then some it's not a good partnership. So Correct. reach out. We give a lot of stuff away for free. We like to have these conversations. And if we're a good fit as partners, we love to partner up with you. ProStruck360.com. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.